Hey guys, John here. Today's patch in Pigments is called Optimus Grime Bass. Now this one kind of started off as a growly type of bass sound and then it transformed to something entirely different. So this is what it sounds like. All right, so that is the patch. It's kind of like, it's bassy, it's grimy, it's almost rhythmic in a certain way. So yeah, let's get into this because this one, there's quite a lot going on here. So let's go to the effects, turn these off. As you can see, we're using every single uh, slot here. And let's go over to the synth. So we're not using the utility engine, so let's turn that off for now. And then we are using two engines. So the first one, wavetable, the second one, analog. So let's turn engine two off and let's look at just this first one here. So this is going to be a wavetable. And the wavetable that we're going to be using is MB2S Growl. And that can be found in pigments four under this uh, sub menu here, MB2S Growl. So if you look at this on more of a 3D type of view, it's just moving a little bit back and forth here. But something to note, once we hit a key, we get that kind of growly sound. And initially we, we see or we hear that sound of it just kind of moving, right? And that first is initially done with a function because we have two different things modulating this position up. The first one is the function and it's just a down saw and it's moving at a rate of 3.18 hertz. So it's going to be a fixed time value. So it's not going to change with tempo. And that's what gives us that first initial drop. But the cool part is once we hold it, we can still get modulation going on for this wavetable. It's always going to be moving. And that second amount, so before, actually before we get into this LFO, the amount for this first function is 0.25. And then the additional modulation is the first LFO at 0.18. So this LFO here is just a sine wave. It's free running, that mean, meaning it's not gonna get triggered every time we hit a new note, it's just always gonna be moving, irrelevant of what we press. And the rate for in Hertz is going to be 0.119. So very slow because we don't want something really fast moving and changing. We kind of want that slow change over time happening because we already have that quick movement due to this function. <laughs> And that's really just the first engine that we're hearing. So we have a little bit of unison on here. We have two voices of unison. The detune is 3%. And we drop this whole engine down by two octaves or negative 24 semitones. Now we do have a little bit of change going on here, especially with the macro. So this tone knob, as you can see, is, is controlled over here on this phase mod, and this is moving at one. So it's basically taking control of this entire knob over here. So all the way to the left is gonna be off, and all the way to the right is gonna be full value over here, select on the heart sync. So that kind of just gives a slightly different tonality, which is why it's called tone. And we can always enter the macros and see what it's actually doing, and here's the only listing here. So it's really only affecting just this knob right over there. And then this engine here is getting sent to filter number one, which is this comb filter right over here. And we'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. Now let's turn the first engine off and let's turn the second one on. So there's really not too much going on in this one. This engine's kind of more so to fill more low end space, give a little bit more harmonics for the comb filters and stuff and the effects to work with. Now for this one here, we drop this down by one octave, so negative 12 semitones. We add two voices of unison and then 3% detune, which I believe is the default. Now we have a saw wave going out and then we have another square wave down here and this one is getting dropped by 12. So if you add this negative 12 and this negative 12, that's gonna be two octaves down for this uh, square wave here. We're not changing any of the width, but these are both full volume out. And you, see, you can see, look, this uh, FM knob right here is getting FM'd by this third one down here. And this range is controlled from macro 2 at 0.32. So we get a little bit more of that Optimus, that transformer type of kind of metallic y machine sound. And we can always hop in here and see what it's affecting. And then, yeah, this is also in wavetable FM amount. So if we hop over here, we can actually see this frequency modulation is also getting. Uh, moved here. So let's turn this guy on. And then we can see that uh, let's actually exit this view. We can see over here on the left, this frequency mod is also getting moved, but really by not that much here, because this one's kind of limited, it's just 0.25 for that one over there. 
So moving on from here, this engine is also going out to filter number one. So if we look at our filters over here, we can see that filter number one, based on this routing, is getting outputted and going into filter number two. So this first filter is going to be the comb low pass six. The frequency is going to be 42.8 hertz and the gain is at 0 0.606. And this is kind of more so really to ear to kind of find out where the comb filter sounds right. And this first one is static. It's not really going to move. But the cool part is the output of this filter goes into the second filter, which is also a comb. And this is going to be the feed forward right over here. And the frequency is slowly getting modulated by LFO number two, which is also in free running and the rate is moving at 0.119. So this is kind of just moving this back and forth just a little bit to get some of that motion. Because once we hold down a node, we kind of always want different changes going on. So it, the, the, the sound doesn't just sound so static. And, you know, there's always something interesting to listen to every time we hold something down. And keep in mind, this is just the second engine. So one engine with no effects or anything else like that. And this gain over here is going to be 0.416. Might as well run through these knobs. The first filter's damping is going to be 8,000 hertz. The volume is at zero, so no change. Keyboard tracking at one mode. This is the low pass six. All pass is going to be a zero pan in the center. For the second filter, like I said, the frequency, the, the spot where we set it at, is going to be 62 hertz. And then this modulation amount is 0.14. The gain, 0.416, volume, zero, keyboard, one, and then obviously the feed forward right over here, and then the pan is in the center. Now, so for our envelopes here, it's not too crazy. The attack, one millisecond to decay, 100 milliseconds, sustain, one, and the release, 20. Now, we are doing a little bit of glide here at 56 milliseconds. This is just a little touch. You can always remove that if you don't like it, but I kind of always feel like it kind of just glues the notes a little bit more, uh, a little better. Especially with this uh, this amount here, it's a small little amount, so it's not really too noticeable, but it kind of just fits in with all of that as well. So moving on from there, before we get into the effects, we do need to talk about this random one here. So if you look here, what this is getting affected by, and this is, this is gonna be in the effects section. So the whole point, if we turn this on here and then uh, turn on our effects as well, We hear that pulsing, right? And it's always rhythmic too with our drums. Which is the speed knob down here. And if we turn this to the left, it's gonna be slower. So what's going on over here, if we go down to our effects tab, this is going to be changing the cutoff for these multi-filters. So let's get into that in just a moment here. So if we turn off FX Bank B and just look at number one over here, and we can see that A is going into B. So these th three happen, and then these three feed into the FX Bank B. So what we have here, let's turn off these multi-filters as well. And we have first a multiband, and this is kind of just the contour of the sound, gluing it together. I brought some of those highs up because I felt like those are kind of Crack, crackly, crispy kind of things that you kind of want in that mechanical sound. A little bit of low end and then kind of the mids just right tucked underneath that. And it kind of helps quite a bit. So we take off this multiband. It really sounds just like nasty and just mean, almost aggressive right off the bat. And then the interesting part, and this is kind of also from uh, from growly type of sounds, is we always have these type of notch filters moving, which is why we're using comb filters in combination with these multi-notch filters and kind of just moving them around. So both of these are kind of the same in that they're also getting moved by this function over here. So every time we hit a note, they'll always have that movement going on but also they're additionally modulated with the random. So once we hold it, we can see that these randoms are always moving in different little spots and that's what's gonna give us that rhythmic feeling. So with that, we can go over here to our random, random number one, and we can see that this is sampled from white noise, re-triggered from the clock, and then here we can choose the rate. So if this knob speed is all the way to the left, it's gonna be one over four. However, if we put this all the way to the right, it's gonna increase it and it's gonna go, it's, the modulation amount's 0.12, but it doesn't say it if we hover over it because this is reading this little white notch here. But this little purple one, if you can see it, is actually going to be one over eight. So that's how we can change from one over four to one over eight if we want a slower or a fa faster uh, rhythmic pace. Then moving on from there, FX Bank B, let's turn this guy on and kind of go through these effects here. So we always have to have a distortion that kind of really brings things a little bit to life. 
and really kind of enhances that low end. We still get that crispiness, but it also gives us our low end back. So take a listen to the difference here. Now this one is not on a macro because it kind of just seems like this is kind of fit for what it is. And that's then this gets fed into the delay, which is time one over 16. So it's a really quick delay, more so meant to create more space as opposed to like delay, 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 right? So it's kind of more of that just opening the sound here. And then that gets fed into a reverb. And generally people say don't put uh, reverb on low end stuff, but I kind of feel like in this case it works pretty, pretty well. And the side pass filter is cutting out 200 hertz, so we're not really going to get that low muddy reverberation. So that kind of helps out there. And then we're cranking this back a little bit. It was a 12K about. Now these delay and reverbs are not gonna be on macros here. I mean, you can assign them if you want to, but it seems like this kind of patch is kind of nice to set it here and kind of forget it and then play with these different macros over here. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the macros are really fun to play with. We got the tone to kind of change the, sh the, the tonality of this whole patch here. And then some healthy FM amount. And it's always a nice little trick too, if you're going to play something a little bit higher up, really increase that FM amount. And as soon as you drop it down to a lower note, then you kind of remove that FM. So something kind of like this. Kind of gives a little bit more me me mechanical type of vibe to that. So that's basically this Optimus Grime Bass. In a nutshell, if you'd like to get it for free, there's a link in the video description below, and it can be yours for the uh, the time it takes to click it, download, and install it, and play it. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hope you learned something from this video, and we will see you in the next one.